The first step is to mechanically hedge the trees to allow easy access to prune back the trees. Cut back the tree to leave behind one quarter to one third of the tree as nursing limbs to maintain sap flow and provide some protection to the grafts. Prepare a plastic paint mixture of one part water and one part plastic paint. Paint all exposed limbs with the paint mixture. Spray painting is quicker than using a brush. When the tree is chainsawed, it's always advisable to leave at least one nurse limb. Uh, ideally, directly west, because you want to be, have some protection from the wind and the, the sun onto the graft areas. But with some trees, it isn't possible to get the limb exactly where you want it. This tree here had a good a limb that was down low. It's hanging off to the side a bit, which isn't ideal, but it was the best limb to leave. So you could have one, two, three areas to graft. That's just the natural structure of the tree. Uh, I don't tend to leave any more foliage than probably what's demonstrated here. Uh, that seems to be enough to keep the tree functioning and allow the grafts to take and get a kick start. And we often leave this uh, nurse limb on for at least one season and possibly two, depending on how these grafts take off. If they get away very vigorously and callous well, uh, we'll take that off in a year. But if they're a little bit slow, we tend to leave that limb on there for a second season. When you bring the budwood into the paddock, it's best to bring it in in an esky and also having the esky a, uh, a tea towel or some paper to sit on top of the, the blocks so you're not sitting budwood directly on very cold blocks. I've selected a bud stick which is looks a little small but it'll suit the size of the actual graft that is to go into. Really big wood going into uh, quite small limbs uh, often doesn't work so try and select the budwood to match the limb. So this is a bit small. I'm just going to divide it in two and prepare the stick. Firstly you look for a side which is uh, probably ha has a butt on it which you can get rid of but doing a sloping cut. And on the other side of the stick, doing a, a nick. And that's to help push the stick in, behind, in underneath the bark. So that one looks suitable. I'll just do another one. And again, a slow, slight sloping cut on the other side. It's best to graft onto a fresh surface. So this has been cut for a day and it's worth making a nice fresh new cut. Now there's a fresh surface. If there's any nicks or cuts, it's often worth just doing a little clean up where you're going to put the stick in. On this particular limb, probably the best places would be on either side here. So the bark's a little bit thicker here and it's not too bad around that side either. So a stick will go on either side. I use a heavier duty knife to do the cuts and the cuts are usually done just pushed in. Pushed in and up. And then I use a bark lifter you need to lift the bark slightly where you made the incisions to help the stick slide down in under here and get very good contact. Same on both sides, just lift the bark a little bit. And now it's ready for the, um, the graft stick. The bark seems to be slipping okay so it's just a matter of putting the stick into where the cut is and forcing it down so it's a very tight fit and also leaving some of the cut exposed because that's important for the callus to grow at the top here and run around and cover this surface. If you push the stick right down past that cut area often the callus won't start to grow out and over this area. Now it's the time to put in the other one. 
So it's the same procedure, in and forced down, leaving a little bit exposed. That's also in there quite tight and it's held reasonably tight by the bark. The next step is to tape that in. Uh, wide, normal budding tape. Uh, any sort of heavy duty tape can be used, but you really need to secure that area so there's no movement of that graft stick. So it's a matter of putting it in, tying it off, there's a, so it won't move. Run that around. And be careful not to put the tape up over the top there. Just a nice tight grab and then tie it off. Once they're in, uh, sometimes uh, that area is sprayed with a fungicide in a, a pressure pack, a Rovril or Bravo, something like that to try and stop any fungal growth starting in the wood. I don't tend to do it here. We haven't had much problem with that area breaking down with fungal problems. So I just leave that uh, open. And then the next step is to get a plastic bag over that to maintain the humidity and also a paper bag to provide shading and some protection. Now what we do is put uh, a plastic bag inside a paper bag. And that'll go over the top there, but we also open the, the top of the bag up. Now that just helps when this is on there, you can go back and inspect the grafts on a regular basis without having to take everything off. So there's one here all ready to go. It's the paper bag with a plastic bag insert. There's also, the top's been opened and there's a paper clip just holding the top. So you can take that clip off, open the bag, have a look, see how they're going and close it up again. And the next step is to tie the bag off with some heavy duty twine or I just use plastic coated wire. And it's necessary to get a very good tight tie on that. So sometimes we have trouble here with crows. Um, we don't want a bird coming along and pulling these off. If the crows do get into this and tear some holes, uh, it's still quite secure and you can fix the, put a new bag on rather than coming back and find the whole bag gone. So that's quite a sturdy tie on there. I'm just going to take a bag completely off to have a look at the insertion point and also just to see if there's any fungal growth on the stump. There's not much fungal growth on top of the trunk, it's still quite stable, there's no breakdown. The callousing is just beginning down in here where they've been inserted. The buds are roughly five centimetres long, which that is a good time to start letting some air in. There's no signs of any rot or deterioration in these buds due to being inside the bag too long. Often, as you see, when grafting is done, sometimes other, some sticks move and others don't. That will eventually move. Uh, but at this stage, those two are moving strongly and it's time to gradually harden them up inside the bag. So I'll be putting this bag back over. If you do take some off to have a look, uh, getting it back on can be a problem. You can break some of these very soft new buds. So it's a matter of being very careful when you put the bag back on. And that's fine. and just tie it securely. These were grafted approximately four to five weeks ago and I've inspected these bags a couple of times during that period. Now it's time to come back and, and uh, just let a bit of air into these, these bags here. Uh, there's quite strong bud growth coming on some of the graft sticks in the bag so it's time to let in a small amount of air and start hardening those up gradually to the outside environment because inside that bag it's very humid 
and if you open it up straight away there's too much of a shock and the buds can or the new growth can uh, dry out and, uh, and not take. There's good bud growth inside the bag, it's about five centimetres long, some of the buds have elongated quite well. It's time now to let some air in, so it's a matter of just opening up a small section, about a third of the top of the bag, so that area here can just be the gradual introduction of air to harden up those buds. And after that, it's still a matter of closing the bag back up, so you don't have the full sun going in there straight away, and leaving it so there's a small area exposed here where the air can gradually get in. After it's had a week to 10 days of gradual exposure, the next step is to fully open the top of the bag. You can see the graft starting to emerge and the bag isn't left completely open. It's just another gradual close up, another clip and just position the plastic bag so there's much more area open and you can see there's quite a hole in here now. That bud in its growth should be pushing through there within the next week or two and starting to come above the bag. And then the next step after that is just to fully open the bag out and let the bud or the bud stick uh, fully expand without any being caught inside the bag and twisting and turning and letting it get up above the bag before bag removal. The shoots are coming through these graft bags very strongly now, especially that limb there. Uh, it's coming through on the second one around the back quite well. Uh, there's been a little bit of crow damage which means the bag's been torn quite severely. These two bags have had to have been replaced because the damage was just too severe and the, all that was really being left there was a, a tiny bit of paper bag and uh, the plastic bag covering the graph which would have been too much intense light. This graph has been a little bit slower than the others on this tree. Uh, I've still left the bag clipped on one side there even though the plastic bag is fully open. It's just time now to open it all up a bit and just allow more air to get in there and that should be right now to start moving out above the graft bag. A week ago I broke off the tips of these grafts here because they're starting to get very long. Uh, there hasn't been much regrowth yet but inside the bag another one of the grafts has taken off and that needs to be broken back as well. If these get too heavy there's a very big chance of tear off. So that's just taken off. That's quite compact now. And also you need to look in the bag and look for suckers that aren't the actual graft, just the original tree. And there's one down in there. So they all need to come out as well. And anything that starts growing around the trunk in suckers, they need to be snapped off. Otherwise you'll get a great bush, uh, in this case Valencia, coming up. And it's just a matter of rubbing them off. If any are jammed up under the bag, get your finger under there and pull them out. But rubbing that off just keeps the tree, all the interest is up here, not in being smothered with suckers coming from underneath the grafts. Commercial grafting, you have to make money. So there are time-saving methods being used by some of the commercial contractors. One of them is for uh, speeding up the procedure, the whole tree is removed and no nursling is left. That's usually done on trees which are seven years or younger and the grafting looks very successful. There's been no problem. Uh, one of the other areas to save time in would be the bag. You can purchase bags which are already open and that saves the effort of having to cut the top and fold it over where now it's just a matter of putting a paper clip on it. Another area where things can be saved is the plastic bag is stapled inside the paper bag before it comes to the paddock and that just speeds up that whole procedure as well. And another option which is already featured on this video is the use of buddy tape which takes away the whole bagging procedure completely. One technique I saw in Italy was the use of bamboo stakes just to secure the grafts and since doing that technique here we've had much less loss of uh, grafts due to wind. Uh, so it's, it is really strongly recommended if you're in a high wind area to 
attach the graft to a very solid bamboo stake. It just takes a lot of the worry out of uh, the grafting exercise. These grafts are six months old and they've been cut back a number of times. This has been cut one, two, three times during that six month period. And it's now time to try and set up the framework, especially lower down onto the graft and get that lower branching structure we're after. Potentially there's four limbs in this area here, which is too many. I'll just take one out and we'll just see how that goes and potentially we may take another one out in time. It's now February and these, the training began on these grafts in uh, January, about a month ago. These were cut back a month ago. There's some regrowth starting. They were cleaned out in here so you can see the actual graft areas. Uh, trying to create a couple of strong leader shoots, whereas this was left just so we could demonstrate what's done. What has to happen is you get the bag off. It's very congested and crowded in here with shoots that, that are not grass but suckers, so the process is getting in amongst those, cleaning them out, cutting out some of the graft shoots to leave a few strong leads. Taking away the lower leaves just to get a look at what's happening down there. Two of these grafts have moved very strongly. So it's a matter of now knocking the top off. And starting to train some of the side shoots. If there's too much weight, they will still tear off. These haven't fully grasped yet. The callus is just starting to run around the top of the graft and you don't want too much weight in the top growth. It's amazing how quickly these things recover from having a, a strong lot of cuts when you clean them up. This is enough pruning for the time being. It's, there's two growths coming out here which means it'll branch as close to this trunk as possible. You can make the mistake of probably letting too much growth uh, come directly upright and then branching from a higher height. It just means the tree is going to be higher up whereas you're probably trying to get the branching as low as possible. So there's two there, there's two on that, there's two around here. You can always come back at a later date and take some of these off. Uh, it's quite, at this stage it's just a matter of doing the basic framework and coming back at a later date and finalising it. I also spray the surface here with a black bitumen paint which just helps to um, seal that area because it's been enclosed in a bag for so long. You can often get a little bit of splitting there. There's a, a, a density of branches in here which can be reduced slightly. It's a good idea to do this progressively rather than just do one great cut uh, all the one time period. It's easier just to take a few cuts out and then look at it, come back in a few months and do it again. So if you just take out the ones that are very upright and obviously by taking them out you'll open the center out a little bit and a little bit more light will come in. That's very close to the final framework but you can come back into later date and reassess and just maybe do a bit uh, more strategic pruning. What will happen with this tree now is in three or four months time, uh, close to late winter, early spring, these trees will be topped with uh, mechanical saws as part of the rest of the block and then treated pretty much as a normal tree. Ideally, if you can branch the graft lower down, closer to where it went into the trunk, would be the ideal. Uh, but systems where they branch a bit higher up are still okay, but that's probably the uh, preferred way of establishing the graft. It's been 18 months since this tree was grafted and in that period over the last 12 months really it's just been a matter of reducing the tree height to balance out the growth so this graft area is strong enough to support the weight on the top. There's been not much more effort put in than that. Uh, there's been some desuckering on the stump 
and after 18 months we're starting to get a little bit of fruit so it's very quick to start bearing again. Three grafts were put into this stump and they've all taken the whole three and the callusing is progressing with moving across the cut area and also the callus is joining up and that gives very great strength and stability to this area. Uh, so pretty much that should all run around here and join up well, over say the next six months and then that area will be covered uh, over the next couple of years so you really won't know except for this union of where the graft actually went into the tree. It's now time to take off the nurse limb. The grafted portion of the tree is well established and this limb can now leave and there'll just be a, a bit of minor spraying around the cut area to seal the wound and because we're taking these off in autumn there's probably no great need to repaint that side of the tree facing into the sun so we'll just take the limb off and paint the cut. On any large cuts we tend to just seal them with a, a spray mastic. And if the paint level has worn off over 18 months on the western side of the tree, uh, we also will repaint that side just to reduce the chances of sunburn because that nurse limb has protected that area for a long period of time and it may be a little sensitive. Uh, but it looks like the paint here is quite intact so we, we wouldn't be worrying about uh, respraying that side of the tree. It's now been two years, nine months since these trees were grafted and we sort of estimate there'd be around about 20 kilograms of fruit for the first crop on these trees. Next year we'd be hoping the amount of fruit to get up to around 50 kilograms per tree and uh, fruit size is quite okay and it's been a very quick return to cropping since grafting. This tree is a 10 year old grafted uh, autonique which was uh, put onto 9 year old Valencias and uh, now it's a fully bearing healthy long-lived tree. Two grafts were placed into these sides of the trees. You can see the what's grown from those two small grafts. The graft line is along here which is sort of given away by the residual white paint which has been on here for nearly 10 years. There's no evidence the original stump left in the middle that's been completely calloused over and that is as good as a, a, a limb grown from a, a normal field grown planted tree.